that process, he's helped me become a better person, not a bitter person. All these young people coming up here and sharing their story, it just amazes me how God uses other people in our lives to help mold us. And I'm hopefully today to my discussion here will kind of learn about some of those things I learned. But it is so important. I can't emphasize it enough. There are a lot of opinions that are going around in our society. But what are we doing to be an example, to empower people, not enable, empower people to become the best that they can be? One of the things mom and dad had to do, they had to make themselves vulnerable. And when I talk about being vulnerable, you make yourself, you expose yourself to the real you. As you saw in that video clip, between the youngest and the oldest was only two and a half years. Fun times. <laughs> Especially somebody like me. But mom and dad, through vulnerability, they were examples about emotional risks. <coughs> You invest in people's life, you give up yourself so that the other person can become a better person as you become a better person through that process. They also exposed imperfections. Were my parents perfect? No, but they loved me unconditionally. They helped me fight through some of those obstacles I was trying to figure out in life. Where do I fit in society? When society says I'm an outcast, and mom and dad say you are an opportunity, and others around me. It also, you have to build relationships. Because even in Austria, while they were growing up, while they were impacting our lives, there were people that had opinions. And those opinions weren't kind. But they were there. But they built those relationships in such a way where they could empower us and empower them to love people beyond themselves. They also knew about uncertainty. Are all of us going to love them? Are all of them going to us going to embrace their discipline styles? I would have to be honest and say we won't, didn't always do that. You'll see in a couple slides, there's a good example of my behavior. <laughs> but, but those uncertainties did, did not stop them to be examples of empowering me and those around me to be the best that we can be. Because in that process, they protected us. That's my favorite picture of dad. In all nine of ten of us. My twin brother died in 1961. He had some health issues. They directed us. That's mom. Every night they'd read us Bible stories and stories just to understand that there's somebody that loves us greater than they. And that's my relationship with God. And I hesitantly share this slide, but I will just to show that I'm vulnerable and that I'm a human being. <laughs> they corrected us. <laughs> just a little bit of behavioral timeout for Pete Colson because he just sometimes needs to pause and think about what's going on. But I really value that because that's what defines me today. The fact that there are some times in life we have to take a behavioral timeout. How many seconds are there in a day? I, there's somebody wants to major math. <laughs> How many seconds are there in a day? 86,400. Take the analogy of having $86,400 in front of you and somebody steals $10. Are you going to spend 886,390 minutes trying to find the 10 bucks? But those are some things we come up to. As a referee, I make split second decisions. Once a decision is made, the party continues. Am I right? 99.999999 times. But there's that 1%, I probably missed something. But, that's life. One of the great things about my parents is they taught me about the ABCs of life. The fundamentals about life. The first one is your attitude. What is my thought life? If you take the alphabet and go from A to Z, you have 26 letters, correct? Okay, you write the word out, 
uh, aptitude, it comes up to about 42, 52%. You come up with a word of about um, knowledge, it's about 96. You come with hard work, it's about 92. But you come with attitude, guess what? 100%. So no matter what you face in life is how your attitude is in processing this, that's what's gonna define you. That's what's gonna make you. So think about your thoughts. Also my behavior, how do I act? Well obviously I had some moments that had to be in a behavioral timeout because I acted out. But my mom and dad were not afraid to teach me tough love. The way I define my dad, when my dad passed and I saw the smile on his face, on his face as I looked at him and his, as he lost his, took his last breath. He had that smile on his face. In the way I defined my dad, he mentored and taught me with tough love and practical guidance. And that tough love was tough, but it molded me to become the best I can be. And they taught me about my character. Because in, the, in this journey in my life, in all of our lives, character is what matters. Because character matters because be careful of your, uh, oh, I went forward. Okay, one of the things mom and dad also instilled in us, it's not the color of my skin. It's not my culture. But it's my character that's gonna define me. It's so easy to use the excuse of racism when you just take a second and build a relationship with somebody. You know where they're coming from and it helps me understand me better. Because that's what it's all about because we're all part of what is called the human race. We're a part of a world that gives us unique identities but a common goal to build character in one another. And in the process of character, be careful of your character, be careful of your thoughts, because your thoughts become your words. Be careful of your words, because your words become your actions. Be careful of your actions, because your actions become your habits. Be careful of your habits, because your habit becomes your character. Be careful of your character, because your character becomes your destiny. When health is lost, when wealth is lost, nothing is lost. When health is lost, something is lost. When character is lost, all is lost. Those are the principles mom and dad instilled into my life. So they taught me about the four R's of life. The first star, respect. Respect yourself and respect others. I learned about respect and about respecting others May 17th, 1974. A pretty significant day in my life because I was three weeks from graduation. We lived in a farm, we milked 240 cows twice a day and those farmers know what that's like, and moving cattle. We were moving cattle one day, and we loaded them in a truck, and I thought that my, my dad said, go, and um, pulled the truck ahead, and a cow fell out. And I, in a kind, soft, teenage manner, <coughs> not, instructed my father what I thought I heard in a very disrespectful manner. That day, my father said to me, son, we can't have two bosses in the house and one's got to go. And it's not going to be me. It was me. That is tough love. Because I learned at that point in time the importance of respecting my elders. And most importantly, about respecting myself. Because I went to a friend's house, and guess what I did? Anybody can speak. What do you think I did? What do most teenagers do through pain? Unfortunately. Go ahead. Drugs. 
I could have done drugs. I went to sleep. <laughs> but the drugs were there. The alcohol was there. I was speaking to a group of teenagers a couple weeks ago, and one of the young people asked me, was there any time in your life when I wasn't supervised? And that's a very interesting question. And I got to thinking about it, and I said to him, no, there wasn't. Because there's formal supervision, and there's informal supervision. And that informal supervision is my conscience. Because in my conscience, I remembered what my father had instilled into my life. Value yourself. Respect yourself. Respect others. Did I have my moments? Obviously, I got kicked out of the house. <laughs> but the point being made, though, when push came to shove, the characteristic he's instilled in my life rose to the top. And I knew I had enough value that I could say no to a temptation and use that no as a new opportunity. And I thank my parents for that. But that's the process of respect. Responsibility with my actions and reactions. Obviously, my reactions at times gave me a corner time. Behavioral timeout, think about it, Pete. But that's so important. In this process of parenting, of coaching, of being teachers, all the different roles that we play in life, if we don't understand that the authority figure is first and the friendship is second, we will never have a boundary in life. The fact that my parents were able to instill into me, I am the boss, not me, but my dad and my mom. And I knew that, we all knew that. Now the challenges was in this process is that there's 10 kids, 10 personalities, 10 kids trying to figure out life. And I'm, I'm here, here's this Pete who analyzes everything and then has some words to say. And sometimes those words need to be cut off because I was not processing things through the right way. So in that process, I have to be reasonable in life. Understand the circumstances I'm going through. Recognize that everybody here has, has a story in this room. In, un, in order to understand that story, I have to build that relationship. And the last R is resiliency. Life isn't fair, wear a crash helmet. <laughs> And the reason I say that, life isn't fair, put on your thinking cap. Allow those pieces of life to instill into you a value system that everybody has value. I remember working here in Twin Falls County with the juvenile drug program, diversion program. And the first thing I did with young people when it came to these sessions, I said, listen, it's not the drugs or the alcohol that are affecting you. It's the inability for you to value yourself enough to say no. You want to have relationships, but you don't know how to navigate through the obstacles of life. Let me help you. And this process starts with my five Fs. The first one is family. Family is a broad term these days. As you saw in my family, we're as blended as blend can be. But it made me a better person. Here in this room, there's probably some blended families. There's some families that are strong together, but we're family. Are there obstacles in families? If you say no, if you say no you're lying. <laughs> Just saying. We all have challenges in life, but we need one another to help in, in build those challenges. We also need friends. And when I talk about friends, I talk about those friends that come into my life, that have come into my life, that told me what I want to hear, but most importantly, they told me what I need to hear. And sometimes what they tell me, Pete, quit being a jerk. Quit being disrespectful. 
Because sometimes my parents couldn't answer all my confusing questions. But I trusted my coach, I trusted my teachers, I trusted people around me to help empower me and give me the messages that I need to hear. Because those are the important messages. Because if I don't listen to those messages, what's gonna happen? Who knows? Faith. My relationship with God, God is my best friend. I'm not ashamed of that at all. He is my best friend because he teaches me daily about grace, about mercy, about love, about unconditional love, and most importantly, about forgiveness. No matter what opinions people have about me, I can't help them in the process of their biases, but I can help them understand I love them and forgive them despite their opinions because I'm gonna be an example to you of empowering you to become the best that you can be. Failure, it probably seems like an odd one, but it's an important one. See, because in life, life is gonna be full of failures. My first experience in, in, into America we went to a private school, and I had the opportunity to play softball at recess. And I barely knew English. I mean, dude, I didn't know anything. And so we are playing softball, and I was playing third base, and the kid hit the ball to me, and my friend says, throw him out. So guess what I did? <laughs> I literally threw him out. I took that ball and I chucked that puppy as hard as I could right at his back and down he went. He was out. What happened after that was a very powerful message. Because that principal came up to me, put his arm on me and says, Pete, out has a number of meanings. The out you used was the wrong out. See that leather piece, piece of leather? That's what out means. But he took the time to explain to me my confusion. It helped me become a better person. The other thing, I started third grade in 1964. I started third grade in 1965. People would consider that failure. But the teacher knew that I needed more time to learn the English language. Because in the process of failure, this is the Pedism, fixing my attitude and actions intentionally so I can learn. Did you hear that? Fixing my attitude and actions intentionally so that I can learn. Because as long as I fail forward, I keep learning. When I start making excuses, what happens? You're not learning. You're not advancing. So those are fundamental things. And the last one probably is fortitude. Fortitude is courage in pain and adversity. Life's gonna have its obstacles. In 19, oh 19, 2002, I had the opportunity to carry the Olympic torch. And I got the care because I was a member, that I was a referee, teaching referee for the Boys and Girls Club for over 37 years. And the interesting thing about this honor is that um, I was nominated that by my ex-wife at the same time she filed the divorce. A paradox. But as I remembered reffing at the Boys and Girls Club, I remember one day a young man came up to me as I was ref and kind of told me what kind of a ref I was. And in his perspective, I was not a very good ref. But he was only like a second or third grader, and so I intentionally, <laughs> I did all ages, but he was only a third, second or third grader, but I intentionally asked his mother the next week to keep do the scorebook. And I said, I see your son has issues, has challenges, whatever. How can I help your son? And she said to me, Pete, my son lost his dad. 
a week ago or months ago. And he's trying to figure out life. What I learned going forward from that is that person first, player second. If I do not develop his skills as a person in life, will he become a good player? Probably not. Those are the tools in life that through the foundation my parents gave me of not being stuck by the opinions of society, but developing me an internal resiliency so I can be strong in every situation. Because the perspective of life is, it's confusing. It's discouraging. Young people here, I, I'm proud of you. Some of you had more challenges than others. But what I see in you as young people is you're not giving up. You're pers pressing forward. There may be some failures, but they're not stopping you. And that's so important. So I'm gonna pray this quick with you real quick and I'll be done.